The Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you, Husky! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush, when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King battle through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston, tall, young, and clear-eyed, was typical of the men who could be found in the Northwest Mounted Police Force of the Yukon country. He had taken advantage of a short holiday and was visiting a trapper friend of his, Dave Ferguson, who lived near Copper Creek. It was early spring, and Dave and the sergeant were doing some hunting along the Pelly River. The ice had broken, and huge cakes of it were floating down the stream. Beside the Mountie was his big lead dog, King, his constant companion, who seemed to enjoy the welcome sunshine as much as his master. Dave, too, was in a fine mood. It's good to feel the sun in your face again. I'm sure glad to see the winter end. Spring's the best season up here in the North Country, Dave. Always a great day when the ice breaks. Yeah, the current certainly carries those ice cakes along fast. Look at them. Yeah, it won't be long before... Dave, what's that on that piece of ice coming down there? Looks like a puppy. Well, I don't see it. Floating this way, not far from shore. Right there, see it? Oh, yeah. It's an animal of some kind. That is dead, though. I'm going to have a look through my field glasses. No, it's not dead. It's moving. It's either a pup or a wolf cub. Oh, poor little mutt. <laughs> Maybe we could save him. A cake of ice will be across from it in a minute. I'm going to tie this rope to King. Maybe he can get the pup off the ice. Here, King. I'll tie this rope to his harness so he won't get carried downstream too far. Yeah, better hurry. Here it comes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see the pup now. He's sprawled out flat. And if he moves, it'll slip off. There. Rope's tied. Now King can just see him. That ice cake is coming this way, luckily. Here it is. King, old fella. See out there, boy? Get him. Bring him in. Uh, he sees him. He knows what you want. Get him, King. I hope this rope's long enough. That's a swift current for your dog. Oh, don't worry, Dave. He's been in worse than that. You may have to help me pull him in, though. Yeah, he's almost reached the pup. Wow, that ice cake almost hit him. Get him, boy. There, he's reached it. The ice cake tipped over. Can you see the little one? King will get him. There. He's coming in. Help me with this rope, Dave. That current is strong. <laughs> hope he got the pup. He has something in his mouth. Come, King. Pull, Dave. He's almost in the shore. A little more will do it. There we are. <sighs> Lucky, he's a powerful dog. Good boy, King. Bring him here, fella. Uh, the pup's probably dead. That's a boy. Drop him, King. <laughs> Poor little whelp. Is he dead? Yeah. Not very much alive. Why, not a dog, Dave. The wolf cub. A wolf? Well, of all the blasted luck. All that trouble for one of them pesky varmints. Throw him back in. Poor little fella. He struggled hard to keep alive. Here, uh, you hold him while I untie the rope on King. Better put him in your parka. He's freezing. Oh, you're too darn soft-hearted, Preston. I never... Oh, he is cold, ain't he? Now, I'll dry him off. I suppose we can't let your dog go to all that trouble and then... Let him see his tosser right back in again. Oh, still, King. Do I get this on Yeah. Yeah, you dried off, you little rascal. That should make you feel better. Now, get in here inside my pocket. Say. What's wrong? His face is bleeding. Oh? He's got a long gash in it. Oh, King probably creased him with a tooth when he grabbed him. Too bad. Oh, it'll heal up all right. I feel like an old fool. Not only rescuing a wolf, but putting him inside my coat and getting blood on him. <laughs> and me, a trapper. Well, come on, Dave. Let's go back to your cabin and let these animals get dried off. Here, King. Here, boy. As Dave held the small wolf cub in one big hand before the fire, his firm resolve to kill it began to weaken. Sergeant Preston smiled as he watched the big trapper stroking the squirming ball of fur. He likes that heat, Dave. Oh, uh... Got any canned milk? Well, you talk as if I'm going to keep him. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, I guess I better give him some milk, as long as he's hungry. He's too little to eat anything solid. Oh, barely got his eyes open. Yeah, lie down there, young fella, till I get some milk. It's going to be all right, Dave. 
Look at him crawling around. I swear, <laughs> Preston, I never saw anybody who liked animals the way you do. Well, you've got to admit he's a cute little beggar. Uh, never thought I'd be nursing a wolf. The other trappers hear about this, they'll lynch me. Maybe you'll be able to tame him, Dave. They're a lot like dogs. I ain't going to keep him. Oh? Here's your little vomit. Drink this. You know, Dave, uh, you shouldn't start feeding him with a spoon. It's going to make you feel like his mother. Oh, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him drink it. He was starved. Come on, you. Take some more. What are you going to name him, Dave? I think you're funny, don't you? Now, listen. You've got a maternal look in your eye right now. You know you're going to keep him. Keep a wolf and me a trapper? Too bad he'll carry the scar the Slash King gave him. He'll grow up with that mark on his nose. What? That's it, Dave. That's a name for him. Call him Slash. Slash. That is a good name. Good. It's perfect. It fits him. You know, I'll bet he grows up to be a good, strong animal. Living through what he did, getting ducked in the river and everything. Oh, well, there's no doubt about it. He has a rugged constitution. Yeah. Uh, here you, Slash. Take some more milk. You really think I could tame him? Well, lots of men have tamed wolves. They make good sled dogs. Well, being alone so much, it might be nice to have a pet. Oh, but a wolf. Well, why not? Well, maybe I'll try it for a while. Just to see what happens. And so, Dave Ferguson kept the wolf cub. Whenever Sergeant Preston was in the territory, he stopped to see Dave and watched with interest the affection that grew between the animal and the trapper. As the wolf matured, he and King ignored each other, but never fought. On one of his visits, the Mountie watched Slash closely as he and Dave talked in the cabin. Slash is getting to be a big fella, isn't he? <laughs> he sure is. <laughs> Timber wolves get pretty big. You know, Dave, I think Slash has some dog in him. You ever noticed when you talk to him, he half wags his tail? Wolves do that, don't they? Oh, no, they don't. And his fur, it has quite a lot of black in it. Well, I did notice that. But there are black wolves, the Arctic kind. Maybe he has some dog in him somewhere. About an eighth, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Hope there's enough to keep him liking to stay with me. Do you have any trouble with him when strangers come to see him? Yeah, he likes you and King, but when anyone new comes around, I have to chain him up. Oh? He won't make friends with anyone else. Well, he certainly is fond of you, Dave. His eyes never leave him. Yep. We're pretty close, Slash and me. He's never lost that scar on his nose The King's Tooth made. That was sure a good name you picked for him. That was almost a year ago, wasn't it? Spring's just about here again. With the return of spring, the Yukon took on new signs of life. The ice broke in the rivers, the birds began to return, and the wild things in the forest began to stir. Dave sat alone in his cabin one evening with Slash. A bright moon was shining over the clearing. Suddenly, Slash raised his head, and a deep whine stirred in his throat. Uh, what's the matter, Slash? Want to go for a walk? <laughs> yeah, it's almost bedtime. Come on, fella. I guess I'd better put a leash on you. You might start chasing something and not come back. Yeah, here it is. Come here, boy. Here you are. Now, come on. Let's go. Yeah, it's a mighty pretty night. It's getting warmer. Oh. So that's what you heard a while ago. Oh, backslash. Stop pulling at this leash. You want to go with him, don't you, fella? You wanted to go for a long time. I know. Keep trying to pretend that you don't. Keep telling myself that you're happy here with me. But it ain't true. All right, Slash. I'm going to let you go. Yeah. Hey, you fella. Go on. Go back to him. You'll be happier. Goodbye, Slash. I'll miss you, boy. But I couldn't keep you here. Hello, Dave. Yeah? Who is it? That's you, Tom. Yeah. It's kind of late for a neighborly call, but I got lonesome. It was such a nice night, I thought I'd walk over for a while. Yeah, glad you did. Come on in. You got Slash tied up. I don't want to get a piece taken out of me. 
Flash isn't here. What? Where is he? Come. I know you're a trapper. I never did approve of Slash. That's right. All wolves are varmints, you know, to be destroyed. They kill more game than we can trap in one season. I know, but Slash was different. Did you finally come to your senses and put a bullet through him? No, Tom, I didn't. Why did you do it? Have a chair, Tom. Might as well tell you. You won't like it, but I let him go. Dave Ferguson! You mean to tell me you let a full-grown wolf loose in our trapping territory? Yep. I guess you've lost your mind. Why didn't you let me shoot him for you? You're pretty fond of your dogs, ain't you? Sure, but they're useful. They're good sled dogs. Why, how'd we ever haul our furs into Selkirk to trade them if we didn't have my dog team? I guess I can't make you understand. Slash was like a friend. Even if he wasn't useful. Winter had again clamped its icy fingers on the Yukon Territory. The long nights were lonely ones for Dave, and his face lighted up with pleasure as he heard the sound of Sergeant Preston's dog team stopping at the cabin. Hello there. Hey, Sergeant Preston, how are you? Can you put me up for the night? <laughs> I sure can. <laughs> Here, let me give you a hand with them dogs. I'll uh, put them in your shed and feed them. Yeah, I was just going to have some supper, and you're just in time. Good. It sure is nice to have company. Well, that was a fine supper, Dave. Huh. Now, uh, tell me about Slash. Ever seen him since you let him go? Yep, a couple of times. You mean he came back here? The last time was a couple of months ago. Early one morning, I opened the door, and he was standing at the edge of the clear and looking at the cabin. I called to him, came up to me, and touched my hand with his nose. When I tried to pet him, he slunk away from me, and he was gone. Haven't seen him since. Well, that proves there must be some dog blood in him. He misses you, even though he'd rather go wild. He don't miss me the way I miss him. He was more than a pet. He's like a friend. I wish you still had him, Dave, especially now. Oh, why now? What do you mean? He'd be good protection. The reason I came over here this time is to investigate some robberies. Some fur thieves have been very active in this territory. Yeah, I've heard about them. You've uh, had a fine catch this season, haven't you? <laughs> I sure have. I have figured to make more out of my furs this year than I did pan and gold last summer. Uh -huh. Got some prime mink, a lot of nice fox, and some lynx. You're so alone out here, it's dangerous. Well, my neighbor, Tom Holt, is a trapper. He has a good dog team, and we're planning to haul our furs to Selkirk in a week or so. We can get a better price for them there. Well, in the meantime, be careful, Dave. I stopped here to warn you. Have you any idea who's doing the robbing? I saw the trapper who was robbed last, Jake Reeves. Lives about 30 miles north of here. His dog team was stolen, too. Two men knocked him out on the trail and stole everything. Fortunately, a prospector found him or he'd have frozen to death. Um, did he see the man? No, Dave. They got him from behind. But he gave me a good description of the furs he had and also his dog team. Now I'm making a tour of all the trading posts in this territory to see if I can trace them. Well, uh, then you'll be around in this district for a while. Well, within a radius of 50 miles, if you call that close. I was just hoping I'd see you again soon. I'll be back eventually, but I have to get a line on these thieves. I'm heading west tomorrow. It was over a week later that Sergeant Preston drove his tired dog team into the small settlement called Cross's Landing. He had traveled over 30 miles that day, and the dogs lay down in the snow as soon as they stopped in front of Jules Dupree's trading post. As he started into the store, he suddenly noticed a certain dog team in front of it, among several other teams, and stopped to look closer at it. Get back, King. Go on back, fella. This lead dog may not like you. Hello there, old boy. Wonder if your name's Duke. Hello, Duke. Uh-huh. Looks as if I guessed it. Let's see now. Black with yellow mask, part Newfoundland. Two white Siberians and two Malamutes. Let's all have a look at this sled. Uh, this is it, all right. I'm lucky. Here, King. Come here, fella. We're going in here, fella. I think we've caught the men we're after. Hello, Sergeant. Oh, there's Preston. Hello, Sergeant. 
Hello, Shoals. How are you, boys? Hi, one minute, I'm doing Which one of you men owns that dog team out in front? The one with the black lead dog. My dog team's out there, Sergeant. Well, so is mine. Which one do you mean? Now look through the window here. That one with the big black dog and the two white Siberians over there is the left. That ain't mine, Sergeant. Huh? Mine is the one with the malnourished lead. No, it ain't mine either. Any of you other men own it? We ain't got a dog team. Well, somebody must own it. Hey, where those two mangoes were in here a few minutes ago? Was there someone else here when I came? We oui, two trappers. Huh? See, that is their fur catch on the floor. They go outside door just a few minutes ago. Are they coming back? We, oui. me, I am busy with Jake. I think maybe they go over to the bar for a drink till I get not busy. Did they see me drive my team up in front? I wasn't watching them, Sergeant. One of them was standing near the window, I think. Uh-huh. Oh, they will come back. They leave all their furs. I'll uh, go over to the bar and see if they're there. Darkness had fallen, and snow was coming down in huge, soft flakes as two men made their way through the woods. One man was tall and heavy set and grumbled as his foot occasionally broke through the crust of snow. His lighter companion called to him impatiently. Hurry, Steve! I gotta go faster. They were safe enough now. Quit your squawking. That man, he might trail us. Yeah, he can't trail us in the dark when he didn't know which way we went. By the time he went over and questioned everyone in the bar, it was pitch dark. Just the same, I'm scared. Yeah, we're more than five miles from town, and the snow will cover our tracks by morning. <sighs> I'm gonna sit down and rest a while. It is a log. Don't stop <coughs> now, Steve. Sit down. We're safe, I tell you. Give all the rotten luck having that Mounty come. It's a good thing I happened to be looking out the window when he went over and looked at our team. We should have killed the old codger that owned it. Maybe we're crazy. That Mounty probably wasn't even looking for us. Maybe he was just interested in the dog. We couldn't take a chance. Anyway, we traded most of the furs at other posts. We didn't lose too much. We got to get another dog team and supplies. Steve, you hear that? Wolf. What of it? We got our guns. I don't like being out in the woods like this. Come on, let's keep going. We'll get to the Pelly River if we keep straight ahead about five miles. Come on now. Oh, all right. But I think we ought to stop and maybe build a fire. Let's keep going. Them wolf howls are behind us. Those critters get kind of hungry this time of year. Getting tired. We walked miles. Yeah, but we made the Pelly River. It ain't far from here to Selkirk. It's easier traveling on this ice. Listen to those devils. They sound closer. Maybe we'd better stop and make a fire. Yeah, I'll scout around and see if I can find some wood. Dave Ferguson and Tom Holt were on their way to Selkirk with their big load of furs. A thin new moon cast a faint glow on the river trail. The sleigh bells jingled merrily as the sled rode smoothly over the ice. Glad it stopped snowing, Dave. This trail is pretty smooth. I don't like traveling after dark like this. Hope we reach Selkirk too. It's the one thing I don't like about this country. This early winter darkness. Oh, it sure makes up for it in summer, though, with the sun shining all day. I'm glad you got those bells in your dog team. Makes things a little more cheerful somehow. Got them at the trading post last month. Some people don't like them, but I do. They let everybody know you're coming. Yes, sir, I sure like these bells of mine. Around the bend in the river, Steve suddenly grabbed Slim's arm and pulled him to the side of the trail. Slim, that sounds like a dog team. Listen. Yeah, yeah, it is a dog team. They're coming around the bend behind us. You think it's the Mali? No, he couldn't be coming from that direction. Now, come on. Get over here to the side of the river. What are you going to do, Hyde? Well, we need a dog team and supplies, don't we? Yeah, but... Well, we're getting them. Now, get your gun ready. I got it. Here they come. It's lucky we got a little moonlight. It's just enough. There's two of them, Steve. I'll get the one on the other side. Oh. Come on, swim. Oh, good shot. Stick them up, you. You saw what your partner got. Why, you dirty... Oh. That ought to keep him quiet for a while. Yeah, good work, Slim. Now stop that dog team. Oh, oh, you hooky. Oh. Now what's on that sled? Can you see? The big load of furs and supplies. Fine. I see if the man you shot has a gun on him or any money. I'll search this one. And if he's packing a gun, take it. Uh, this one has a gun. I got it. Is he dead? No, but he's knocked out. 
You shot him in the shoulder. Now, come on. We'll take the dog team and get out of here. We just want to leave him here like this? Yeah. Yeah, this one is unconscious, too. <laughs> here with no guns and that one bleeding all over the place. It won't get far. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Hear that? Yeah. It's creepy. Yeah, they're getting close. Let's get out of here. Hurry up, Slim. Get that sled going. Right away. Slim and Steve had left when Dave regained consciousness. A sharp pain stabbed through his head as he raised up, but he dragged himself painfully to Tom Holt's side. Tom! Tom, are you still alive? Dave, it's you. They shot you. I can't move. My shoulder. Dave, did you hear that? It was a wolf. Yes, I heard him. And those skunks took our guns. I got nothing but a knife. I'm bleeding from this wound. So those wolves get the scent of it. Dave, what do we do? I'll cut some branches with this knife and start a fire. That'll keep them off for a while. You lie still, I'll build a fire beside you. Dave stumbled through the trees that lined the riverbank, breaking off dead branches. The howl of a wolf close by sent him running back to town. With shaking hands, he lighted the handful of twigs. As the tiny flame leaped up, he fed it with larger branches from the pitifully small supply beside him. It was then he saw a pair of fiery eyes shining from a nearby thicket. Desperately, he piled more branches on the fire. Dave, you see it? What was that in the bushes? It's a wolf. Well, don't worry, Tom. It won't come near us while we got a fire. Look, Dave. On this other side, there's another one. Oh, I only had more wood. You can't leave to get any more. Those branches won't last more than a few minutes. I've got my knife. I'll do what I can. This fire will be dying down. Over there. There's a third one, Dave. A big gray one. Look, he's coming over this way. I got my knife ready. When he jumps us, I... Tom! What's the matter? Tom, I can see him. He has a big scar on his muzzle. It's Slash! Slash! Here, boy! Don't you know me? Are you sure? Look, he's coming to you. Slash, old fella. You know me, Slash! Look out, Dave. That other wolf is moving in. Slash jumped him. He's fighting for me, Tom. You can't fight both of them. They're tearing him to pieces. Uh, there's another one coming through the trees. No, that's a dog. He's helping Slash. What? That dog, it looks like... Someone's coming. You hear those shots? Help! Help! I'm coming. That's Sergeant Preston. That dog is King. King and Slash saved us, Tom. That's King coming from the shadows. But Slash, where's Slash? Three wolves are lying there in the snow. One of them is Slash. I'm going to see. Hello! Are you all right? Preston, we're so glad to see you. Oh, you're Oh, hey, it's you. I saw your fire and heard those wolves. I sent King ahead. He got here in time to help, just in time. Look, Preston, help Tom. I'll right. find Slash. One of these is Slash. He, he saved us. He fought those wolves and King helped him. Oh, here he is. Oh, he's still breathing. He's badly torn. He's bleeding. Yeah, we'll there. All right. There, old we'll boy. Sure, now, you're sure glad you got here, Sergeant. Yeah. Yeah. Put him down here, yeah. Dave. Is Tom hurt bad, Sergeant? I got a bullet in my shoulder. I bled some, but it, it isn't too bad. I'll get you on my sled right away, Tom. There's a trapper's cabin about a mile from here, and I can take you there. <laughs> well, King, old boy, you didn't get hurt much, did you? He got here just in time to take care of one of those wolves. Slash was fighting both of them. How is Slash, Dave? He's alive. Good. Preston, can we take Slash to the cabin, too? Along with Tom on the sled? I'll say we're going to take him... Oh, and to think I wanted to put a bullet in him once. Of course we'll take him, Dave. Now tell me what happened to you while we got started. Many hours before the late morning sun had risen, Sergeant Preston was again on the trail of the fur thieves. The snow had stopped, and the trail was clearly written on the smooth ice of the river. The Mountie pressed his team hard. A day, a night, another day passed. Darkness had fallen when Sergeant Preston saw a campfire ahead. King, you're coming with me. Now stay beside me, fella. Approaching the campfire from downwind in order not to alarm the men's dog team, the Mountie walked quietly toward it, screened by the spruce trees. Steve and Slim were preparing their sleeping rolls when suddenly Sergeant Preston's voice rang out in the stillness. Stay right where you are and keep your hands off your guns. What? Who are you? The Mountie. I'd like to examine those furs on your sled. There are furs. 
We're trappers. I've been on your trail for some time. You didn't stop to trade those furs in Selkirk. You went around the town. I followed you. It wasn't our trail you followed. Then you won't mind if I have a look at those furs. No, you don't, Rowdy. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. oh, oh. oh, oh. Stand right where you are, Slim. You're covered. Give me your gun. I wasn't going to shoot. Thanks. Take this dog away. After I get the gun you pulled on me. There. All right, King. Let him up, boy. I told you not to reach for your gun. My dog's trained to watch for that. Get up. I arrest you both in the name of the Queen. A few weeks had passed, and a full moon brightened the clearing around Dave Ferguson's cabin. Dave smiled as he opened the door and saw the tall form of Sergeant Preston with King beside him. Uh, Preston, I've been wondering about you. Come in. I came as soon as I could, Dave. I knew you'd want to hear what happened. But first, how's... Uh... Oh, well, I don't have to ask. There he is in front of the fire. How are you, Slash, old fella? He's fit as a fiddle. <laughs> Take your pack off, Sergeant, and sit down. Thanks. Hello there, King. Oh, he and Slash won't fight. Lie down here, King. Uh, sit down, and I'll make some hot tea. Uh, tell me, did you get them yellow rats that robbed us? Yes, I got them, Dave. They're both in jail now, and I brought most of your furs back, too. Good for you, Preston. Tom better? Yep. He stayed with me until two days ago, and he's all well again. Good. Where did you catch those thieves? I only got a good start that night when I had to take you and Tom to Bill's cabin. But we got on their trail again a few days later. I got them on the other side of Selkirk. Going south. Yeah, it sure was lucky that you trailed them through the woods that night from Cross's Landing. King picked up their tracks from the side door of the trading post. I've never been able to follow them without him. And King's the one who saved a wolf cub from a piece of ice floating down the river. If he hadn't done that... Uh, hear that, Preston? It sure sends chills up my spine. King doesn't like it either. But it doesn't seem to bother Slash. He didn't even raise his head. He don't seem to want to leave me anymore. <laughs> I guess he's made up his mind to stay. I'm glad, Dave. Well, King, looks as if this case is closed. <laughs> the Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is brought to you each week at this same time. And all characters, names, and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. Don Hendrick speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. How many times have you looked up the meaning of a word only to forget its definition? Perhaps one word that baffles you is paradox. Webster tells us that paradox applies to any statement that seems self-contradictory, but oftentimes is really true. No, this isn't a lesson on word meanings. It's an aroundabout method of pointing out something about our famous forum, America's Town Meeting of the Air. Newspaper headlines, magazine articles, even commentators often bring you conflicting opinions so that the news picture is just one big paradox. Well, to get to the point, America's Town Meeting is a program designed to straighten your thinking. Here's a show that airs controversial issues by introducing well-known authorities who discuss these issues from every angle. For a good, sound opinion on today's news puzzle, listen tonight.